Hello Tigers, it's Dr. Wilson and I am going to teach you how to make homemade bread. It's very simple, it's very tasty, and I hope you enjoy it. All right, so these are all the ingredients that you will need and as you can see, they're pretty simple things that you'll find around the house. The only exception might be the yeast and I recommend that you buy yeast in bulk in a big container like this. Um, so that you will have it on hand rather than buying the packets, which are very overpriced. All right, so we're gonna start by moving the things that we don't need out of the way right now. We're gonna start with milk and butter. We're going to add yeast and sugar, and then eventually we'll add our flour. All right, first we will start with our milk. We need two cups of milk. We're going to pour them into the microwave safe bowl. This is just a measuring cup that I'm using instead of a big measuring cup. And we need half a cup of butter, which is literally one stick. So what I'm going to do is take this butter, which I just got out of the freezer, Put it down in the milk and I'm going to put both in the microwave for one minute. All right so as you can see the butter has mostly melted and the milk is warm and the reason why it's important for the milk to be warm is that when you add the sugar which we're now going to put half a cup I like to use the pure cane sugar instead of the white sugar. But now, when you put the sugar and the yeast together, you have to have warm milk so that the sugar and the yeast will react. We're going to use two and a quarter, and I'll just use this teaspoon and just a little Put a little extra, a little dab. Two and a quarter of the yeast along with the half cup of sugar. And you're gonna mix those two up. So you wanna take a few minutes to mix this up nicely and let it rest so that the reaction can take place. The butter is still a little bit unmelted so I'm mashing it down. And you see the clumps of the yeast are in there. So I like to break those up too. All right, it's important to allow the mixture to rest for approximately one minute so that the chemical reaction can take place. Once you've allowed the mixture to rest, then you add four cups of flour. So, I like to use the half cup measure because the cup doesn't fit down inside of my mason jar. So there's half, and you notice that I'm guesstimating. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's one, there's another half, there's two, And again, you'll do this until you get to four cups. Half. Three, and almost done. Half, four. It's a lot of flour. So there we have approximately four cups of flour. So now you just take your spoon and you fold the flour into the mixture till it's all the way mixed through. Now, once you get done mixing this up, it's gonna be kind of doughy. It is dough, it's good dough. You'll notice that it's no longer watery. That's the way it's supposed to be. I try to scrape all the ingredients off the side and into the mixture because now what needs to happen 
is that your dough needs to rest again. You're gonna allow the dough to rest for one hour, covered, I just use a paper towel, put it on your countertop, let it rest for an hour so that it can rise. That's what the yeast is in there doing. So we'll be back in just a few minutes after our dough rises for an hour and we'll talk about what to do next. All right, it's been an hour and I chose to go ahead and use a foil this time instead of a paper towel just to make sure that we got a good rise. And as you can see, the dough has risen. So next we're going to start to add these leftover ingredients. We're gonna use our salt, we're gonna use baking powder, we're gonna add a little tiny bit more flour. So let's start with the salt. We need two teaspoons. And again, it's, whoop, a little extra, so I'll take a little bit off in the next one. It's not an exact science, but about two teaspoons of salt. And we need one teaspoon of baking powder. Now, baking powder you do need to be careful with because too much can cause a problem. So the baking powder actually has a ring inside, which is really nice because all you have to do, you scoop it in and then you square it off. Whoop. Make it nice and even. So one teaspoon of baking powder. And then you see when I push that down, how it kind of folds back in. That's that yeast, those yeast bubbles that made some air pockets. We're gonna finish with about three quarter, there's half, three quarter cup more of flour. And again, it's not an exact science, so. Um, sometimes I use a little more, sometimes I use a little less. That's about right. And we're gonna go ahead and mix those together. Now at this point in time, and I didn't mention before we got started, but anytime you wash, or I'm sorry, anytime you cook, you should know this, but just in case, make sure you wash your hands really well, especially up underneath your fingernails, because when you go to make bread, at some point in time, you're gonna to have to get in there with your hands. So you wanna make sure that you have washed your hands real good before you get started. So, as you can see, we are mixing up our last few ingredients. That last little bit is difficult to get in there, so we're gonna now move to the hands. Now, I like to use a little canola oil on my hands, just a little spray, just to try to keep everything from sticking to my hands. So we're gonna try to get the rest of that flour mixed in there. dough on the sides. I'm going to try to get all of that dough in. You see, I'll just kind of turn it and push and knead to try to get all the ingredients mixed in there well. And again, a little bit more oil just to keep the, the dough from sticking to me. Might have got a little extra flour this round because it doesn't all want to mix in good. Just take your time. There we go, we just about got it. A little bit left in there. Okay. I think we about got it. It's a little bit of a workout here <laughs> to get all this dough mixed up. That's why bakers have big muscles, baby. <laughs> all right. Just about there. This, by the way, is my mother's recipe. And it actually is her recipe for the rolls part of cinnamon rolls. And so if you wanted to now make cinnamon rolls with this bread, you would take your rolling pin, roll it out on the table with a little powder, and then all you have to do is melt some butter, put it on top, 
put some brown sugar over the butter, put some cinnamon over the butter, roll it up tightly, slice it up, put it in the oven at 350, and now you got cinnamon rolls. So now you have two for one. You have two recipes instead of one. There you go. My mama, Sharon Feedback, would be very proud of you. She has her own book too. Okay. So if you want to take a look down in there. Yummy. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. So you just take your time with it. I'm going to take a little flour, kind of dust it over the top. Make sure we've got all of the flour mixed in. Okay. I feel pretty good about that. You don't want to overdo. You don't want to overdo your over knead your dough either because you can make it rough. All right, let's set that aside for just a moment. We're gonna grab our bread pans. I bought both of these at um, Walmart for I think six dollars a piece. I know, maybe uh, not too bad. But I like to use the uh, reusable kind because you'll have them again for next time. All right, so a little bit of oil, and a little bit of flour. Kind of coat the pan so it doesn't stick to the pan. I'll show you this in just a second when I get done. See how it's kind of coated the pan? You want to do that so it doesn't stick to the pan. top of the flour. Now, back to our flour, our, I'm sorry, our, our bread dough. I'm going to take, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to half it. I'm just going to take about half of it and split it in half. Again, a little bit of flour on my hands. I'm going to knead, knead it one last time. Kind of rolling, you see I'm kind of rolling it under into a loaf, which I'm now going to put in the pan. Same thing here. I kind of knead it. And put it in the pan. Now don't worry, uh, as you can see the um, loaves don't, take a look at the, the pans for me. The loaves don't fit the pans exactly, that's okay, because we're gonna let this rest again for about, I don't know, 10 minutes. And what we're gonna see in 10 minutes is that this is gonna fill the pan, it's gonna raise again. And then we're gonna put it in and bake it. Be right back. All right guys, our loaves have risen up a little bit and we're gonna go ahead and put them in the oven for approximately 25 minutes until you have a nice golden crust at 350 degrees. All right, it's been about 35 minutes. I had to go a little extra time tonight to try to make sure that everything was done. Last time we did bread, it came out a little bit doughy. So there's a fine line. You don't want it to be burnt, but you also don't want it to be undercooked. All right, so as you can see, here we have the final product, and I'm just gonna slice the piece off so you can see what the inside looks like. Okay. See that steam coming off there? See, it's a little, little, little doughy still, but not bad. I like my bread a little doughy. I don't like it crispy and burnt. But that's it, so. I hope that you will try this at home. As you can see, it's not super difficult, but the end product is well worth the time that it makes, uh, that it takes to make this bread. So I hope that you will give it a try. Um, thank you. P.S. One thing I like to do is take the stick of butter that's left while it's hot out the oven, rub it on the top. Let it soak down in there. This bread 
is incredible plain, but just a little bit of butter on there. And it is delicious. Thank you.